let me also okay welcome to baku power bi excel and innovating with petrus method groups 10th session in 2022 so i'm always just starting showing you uh, one of the beautiful views of our lovely city city of Vince, baku so uh, let's go on with our agenda uh, so we'll have our introduction section session and then we will go on with giving some information about our sponsor so-called enterprise dna and then uh, we will uh, define our enterprise dna winners uh, the number of these winners is two, uh, three so they will have uh, full access to enterprise dna uh, dna's portal and then uh, our lovely speaker from Australia, Bahit, uh, will uh, talk about uh, the topic that connect, is about connecting Power BI with SQLite and the Primavera T6. And then we'll have um, our QA session, right? So uh, let me give a little bit of information about our sponsor. Uh, Enterprise DNA uh, just um, in every month gives three free annual uh, memberships. Uh, each month, a uh, full membership to uh, three people. And we select these people randomly. And as for Baku Power Day, Excel and Innovative Expertise Method Group, we have uh, more than 1,200 people. 50% of them are coming from Azerbaijan, and the other 50% are coming from uh, other uh, points of the world. And this group is organized by me, by Mehriban Zia, and also by Pragati Jain. So Enterprise DNA is a great uh, portal if uh, someone who wants just to uh, get uh, the latest information about Power BI and other power platform products like, like Power Automate, Power Apps, and also another, uh, other products. So uh, this is a great place, one of the great places that uh, one can uh, visit and uh, just uh, study or get the, uh, the necessary information about these products. So uh, as for today's speaker, we are going to host uh, Mr. Wahid Kastmarsh uh, from uh, Australia. And uh, I think in next minutes, he will uh, give the necessary information, introduce himself. And uh, as for our next speaker, we are going to have Pragati Jain from England. And uh, Pragati Jain is also uh, organizer of our um, Metap group. He, she will be talking about data perspective in Power BI. And um, our session is recorded and live streaming. And uh, it's uh, happening on uh, Excel World's uh, Facebook page. And uh, also, if uh, somebody uh, just want, uh, wants to uh, watch the recorded version of previous sessions, so that the person can do it on our uh, YouTube channel, Garzal Baliyev. So this is the uh, cover of our uh, YouTube channel. So you can do it there. And also, uh, I would like to give a little information about my data summit, which is going to happen on September. It's a three-day event uh, that begins on 5th September and ends on 7th September. We have very good uh, lineup of speakers from different uh, countries of the globe. So I can uh, invite you to visit our mydatasummit.com website and you will uh, you know, uh, just uh, get the necessary information from that website. Uh, thank you very much for your attendance, but with your permission, I will take only just two minutes to define our winners. But taking an opportunity, I would like to accept our, uh, say, uh, this new, uh, just um, newcomers. Also, okay, so let me go on with my um, Excel file. Okay, I think uh, uh, you see my Excel file. Here we can find, you know, uh, 37 people, uh, just uh, names, right? Who attended previous uh, session. And uh, 39 is the average time of attendance. So who has attended our event? more than 39 minutes. So this is the list of those people. So this is the unique list, right? And here we have our uh, formula, I mean, uh, Excel function, uh, index and rent between. Okay, so I'm just going to press Fn and F9 button and I will uh, count back. 
uh, from three, then, uh, and I will uh, release my fingers. Those names that are going to appear here are the, uh, our winners. So uh, if one name uh, is repeated for two times, uh, then I will uh, do it again. I mean, uh, do a random selection process again. So let's get started. I'm pressing on F9. So three, two, and one. So these are the people who uh, won today's uh, three uh, say enterprise DNAs um, full membership. My congratulations. So I'm stopping here, stopping sh uh, sh stop sharing. So uh, Wahid, you may go on and uh, I will accept other people who are waiting for us uh, in the waiting room. Okay, stage is yours. Uh, can you please give me the up, uh, give me this yes. access to share the screen? Yes, it exactly. Seems I'm not able, yeah. Okay, now you may uh, share. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now it's okay. Can you see my screen? Exactly, I see your screen. Yes. Great. Hello, everyone, and I'm very happy to see you here. And thank you for joining us. Thank you to Elgar to organize this session and having me and special thanks to DNA Enterprise DNA to support this user group, to give us this opportunity to gather together as a community and share the knowledge. Uh, my name is Vahid Dusti Uh I think this name is not very really strange for you guys because I'm originally from Iran, I'm Persian, but I'm, I'm living in Australia, Sydney, Australia live now, right now. So a uh, little bit about me, I'm the Microsoft Certified Trainer and I'm the Project Management Consultant. Most of my background uh, is in the project management side, but a uh, few years ago, I accepted a new challenge and moved to the data analysis uh, section. And since then, I try to be an active, in, active person in the community. So I'm the Microsoft Certified Data Analyst, super user in the Power BI community, and I'm a technified person with plenty of enthusiasm of Power BI and DAX. I work a lot with Excel and VBA. So my background is from Excel and VBA, not from SQL. And actually I'm the leader at the Persian Power BI user group. We have a, another user group in the community, which is the Persian Power BI user group. And I'm the organizer of that. I have a lot of like, sometimes I write a blog post there and I'm an active learner. I still learning and that learning never stops. That's pretty much about me and what we want to do and what we want to uh, review today. So today I want to talk uh, about, I'm, I'm going to show you how we can connect our Power BI to the P6 and SQL database. And then I want to show you why, I want to tell you why I selected this topic, why SQLite and Primavera P6, what the reason of that, then I will show you how we can connect the Power BI to the, 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 the SQL database and P6. Yes, we need uh, to find a solution because there is no certified connector for SQLite. And then I will show you how you can connect the update the connector drivers. And then the, we will have the demos, uh, demo. Most of my, this, most of the time, most of the uh, time of this station will be a demo section. I just have a few slides. So I will do my best to wrap up in 45 minutes. Feel free to raise your, uh, raise your uh, submit your question or raise your question in the chat box or whenever you want to stop me and ask your question. Otherwise at the end, we will have a 10 to 15 minutes to have a question and answer. So let's go to the next slide. So why SQLite and Primora P6? Why I selected this topic? Well, if you don't know the P6, P6 is Primora P6 is an Oracle solution and it's the best, uh, um, the best uh, solution for the project management and especially in the scheduling and planning section. It's very similar to Microsoft project, but it's, a little bit complicated and very professional. So in all complicated and big project, mega projects, people, most of, in most of them, people use the P6 or Primora P6 as the main software for scheduling. So 
the P6 has two types of solution. One of them is PPM and the other one is the EPPM. PPM stands for, stand for Primoral P6 Professional Project Management and EPPM is Enterprise Project Portfolio Management. And what's the difference between those two PPM is the standalone say, version. It's a Windows based version. So it's a project planning tool and you can install it on your PC and connect that to the database. But the, EP, uh, the EPPM is a web-based project management tool, which is good for medium to large enterprises. And there are many, uh, many complex differences between these products, but I don't wanna, but those, uh, those, uh, those items are not part of this station. But to short the longest, uh, to cut the longest story short, the PPM, is the local version, EPPM is the cloud-based version. So that's the biggest, the biggest difference of the two different versions. So uh, uh, in terms of the connecting to the PC, to, to, uh, to Power BI, uh, these two have different databases. So for the EPPM, you can connect that to the Oracle database or SQL database and connecting that to Power BI is very straightforward because Power BI already has a certified connections, connectors for those two types of the, the databases. You can just select them, put that the address of the database there. If you have access, then you can read all the data there. But the most popular version of the P6, which is the PPM, and the, but that one still has some other options. The most popular one is the standalone PPM with the SQLite database. So, if you want to install your P6 on your computer, if you want to use it as a standalone, you need to install it on your P6 and use the SQLite database. So because of that, I selected this topic to fit two bears with one, uh, one, uh, one, uh, uh, one stone. So what we have, we want to do is to learn uh, to review that, how we can connect Power BI to SQLite and Primora P6 with SQLite database. So, the, uh, they, but there is an issue in there because Power BI doesn't have a connector, certified connector to connect the SQLite database to it. So we need to find a solution for that one because uh, the kind of, uh, because there is no certified connection. So we need to use another connection, which is the ODBC, and it's a sound for Open Database Connectivity. So we need to uh, connect. We need to install the driver of the ODBC because. By default, it, the driver of the SQLite, uh, SQLite database is not installed on your computer. You need to check, we need to check it first and then make sure the driver, if the driver is installed, then we can configure our database and start connecting the Power BI to that type of the database. So what we need to do first, we need to check uh, the driver and update the driver. To check the driver, to check the, uh, check the current status of the driver, we need to run the, uh, uh, we need to open this run uh, window. You can press uh, Windows, uh, Windows with the, uh, keep the windows on your keyboard and then press R and then type ODBC AD32. And then one window will be open here. Let me, Close it, bring it here. It's not on our screen. Yeah, here. So let me just close my. Yeah, yeah, that's that's good. Uh, yeah, let me yeah bring up this here. Okay, that's pretty much better than before. So when you open this uh, this window, there are many tabs here. Then you can check most of them. So the first one and the most important one is the drivers. First, we need to make sure the SQLite driver, driver has been installed on our computer. So what we have here, we have the access, we have Microsoft Excel, ODBS driver for SQL Server, SQL Server, and the two other the drivers, which are for the SQL, SQL the database. But there is no driver for SQLite driver. So first thing we need to do, we need to go to a website and download the driver for a computer. So uh, yeah, so the, the website is chwerner.de slash SQLite 
uh, ODBC. Let me just send it in the chat box. So I do it correctly because it's my first time using the Zoom. <laughs> so yeah, it should be here. Okay, so I just sent it in the chat box. So you should have it there. And if I run the Zoom with, yeah. Okay, so when you open this, uh, this website, there are many items here, but the important thing we want to use is this, this section with the current version. There are many items here. You can see the SQLite here, the SQLite 64 for 64 bit computer and some other, I, uh, some other options with different type of the files. What I need want to use, I want to use this one, which is SQLite for 64 based computer because my computer is 64. So I will click on that one, download that one, and then install it on my computer. And here there is a very easy, just press next, next, agree. And everything. This question is, do you want to install SQLite two drivers? I don't want it because I want to install the SQLite three drivers on my computer, install it and finish. Then let's close this and run it again. So now if I go to the drivers, you can see the new items appear here, which is the SQLite 3 ODBC driver under the driver tabs in the ODBC data source administrator. So right now we have the SQLite driver for the ODBC. So it's is ready to, insert, to define or, or DSN, define or database and connect to the Power BI. But before that, let's move to PCs. And let me just show you a little bit about the PCs and then the SQLite database and start connecting that to the database. So as I told you, P6 is the professional tool for the project management, especially in the scheduling and project planning. It's all about the WBSS activities, project and and, and, and then the resources and creating relationship between activities. But at the end, all data will be saved on a SQLite database. You can connect that to the SQL, SQL and Oracle database, but the standalone version, which is the most popular version of the P P6, it has the SQLite database. So I created one project here, which is my name and the project ID is 1000 with four activities and two WBS. So if you are not familiar with the project management area, it's okay because I don't want to talk about the project management and everything. So just to tell you that there's some, because I will use some words, WBS stands for the work breakdown structure. For example, if we have a, a project to build a home, we need to first do the foundation, then the walls and the roof. So the, the foundation, wall and roof are WBS and the activities related to that. That's enough things we need to know about that. So the other thing is, if I want to have a SQLite database, I need to uh, I need to install one other software which is very useful and that's the SQLite Studio. So if I just go SQLite Studio, yes, I'm gonna find it in my computer. There are many studio on my computer. OBS, SQL. <laughs> uh, okay, let me select it. this one. If you want to download that one here, you can go to the SQLite uh, studio.pl and then you can download it for your, uh, for your computer. And then after you install it, you can run it and you can see, you can start define the database, you can open the SQLite databases and then you can use them on your computer. Uh, if I find it on my computer, it should be here. Yeah, I'll use SQLite database. Anyway, so I will install it again because I couldn't find it on my computer. Things happen. So if I go to there, it should be here. 
Uh, start the SQL Light Studio on computer. <clears throat> okay, so. Okay, see. Okay, this, this is the SQLite Studio, find, find it. So you can define the database here, there are the tables, and then in the tables you can find the data and everything there. So for P6, again, it will, uh, it's connected to the SQL database as well. And then for the SQL database, you know, that's a very popular database. It's, uh, if you search for the most popular, popular databases in, on the net, you can find it, this type of database is always in the top 10, especially for the mobile phone and those uh, light and sad light softwares, they always use this uh, type of database. So it's very powerful and very useful. And there are many softwares uh, with the SQLite database. So it's very popular and it's good to know how to connect that to the peer, to, peer, to Power BI and visualize the data to there. So, okay, now we know that a little bit about the PC, a little bit about the SQLite, and we know how to open that with the SQLite the studio. So, and we install the, we install the driver for our ODBS. What we need to do is to uh, define the DSN for our system. So that DSN, uh, if we wanted to install that, we have, that's a data source name. So we have two type of the DSN here, the user DSN and the system DSN. Um, the difference between those two is user DSN, if you define that, it will be available just for you. But if two or more than the two people use the system or your machine, your computer, then if you use it in the user DSN, it won't be available or for the other users. The other, if you want to make create one and make it popular, make it, uh, make it as a, a uh, shade, uh, shade you, DSN, you need to use the system DSN. The, uh, the person with the admin, uh, admin uh, account can create the uh, system down the DSN and then all the user of that machine or that system can use that, that uh, DSN to connect the database to the Prima Power BI. So first, what we need to do <clears throat> is to add the DSN here. So. Before that, I want to go uh, close my file, close the PC. So here, if I click on the add, there are well, first, the first question there is which type of the driver do you want to use? So I will select that SQLite because I just installed that in this session, we want to use that, click on finish. And then there are some, uh, some question and it's very easy to complete that. The first one is the name. I've been naming it as a Primara P6 here. And then we will add some database. Uh, we need to find a database here. So for the P6, if I run the P6 again, before we log in, we can click on the edit database configuration and then click on this one, click on next. And then we can find the database address here. So it's PPM, DBS, D, D, DB, SQLite, that DB. So here I will copy that one, close this one, close this one, and then here in the database name, you can browse and find it, but I will just paste that address here, and that's it, that's done. You you create it, if you click on the okay, you created that P6. P6 DSN for that one. So, okay. Now we added the data driver, we uh, created the, the user DSN, so everything ready. So now let's open the Power BI desktop. In the Power BI desktop, if we want to kind of use this DSN, we need to find first, we need to find the ODBC, the connector, open that one. So let me bring it to this screen. <coughs> me so here if you go to more and then the list we can search for odbc and here select this one click and connect when you select that one that odbc there is a drop down here and then this one you can use some options and because we created that P6, 
we can select it here. So if I click that one and click on OK, that will connect my Power BI with the SQL database at the PC. And it's now connected and you can see uh, all the da all the tables from the database, from the P6 database appear here. So all data, all data which you have in the P6, which you have, you are using the P6 with the, all those data are, are available in this database because at the end of the day, and at the end when you add something in the, uh, in the, in the P6, all those data will be kept and will be saved on that database. So, so if normally people, when they want to create a report uh, with the data from the PCs, where they define it, some uh, layout, they run some reports and pull the information like a copy paste to the Excel and then connect the Excel to Power BI. But with this way, you can connect your file, you can connect your Power BI directly to the backend of the PCs and then you can find the information from the from the uh, from the tables and create and create, develop the report you want. So let's park it uh, for now and go back to the SQL database, the other database we have in the SQL uh, studio. And then I will back to this section and we'll talk about the, some important tables of the PCs, which tables are very important, how we can find the activities, how we can find the project and what the difference with the project and baseline so, uh, to, to show you how you can find them in, from the back end of the P6. Okay. So if I go to the SQLite studio, and if I want to add the database, I will click on this one, SQLite, then I will select the, uh, select the, uh, the database here, SQLite open. I will select this one, uh, file name. I will select this right here, Boku, open that one. Uh, no, sorry, let me select this one, for example. This one, then I can uh, add a name to this one. If, oh, for example, click on OK. So it's here now. I will connect it to there, and there are one table there. I will remove this table. <clears throat> and then in the table, I will create a table from the scratch. Then uh, I will add. Vahit, are you here? What you want? Um, why is that 45? 53. There you go. And then, for example, Alex, 22. So, done. I added some information there. So, I created the file, and that's, uh, that's there. So, everything okay now? Well, how can I find it? Find it uh, how can I define the, another uh, DSM for this one? Go back to that ODBS source administrator. And this time I want to create, for example, the system DSM. I will click and add. And this this one, I will select the uh, SQLite 3 ODBS driver again. And then here I will add the name for this DSM to make it unique. So test, Roku. And then to, uh, to select the file, I will go and find this one because I create, use this file to create that. Click on OK. OK. And then let's back to the Power BI. So again, let's connect that and using the ODBS driver. <clears throat> OK. ODBC driver. Mm -hmm. And here we can find test Boku and click on OK. And then it will ask for the username and password. But, and then you can say username with the Windows name. Uh, select the Windows to use the your uh, Windows credential. And you can see there's only one table. And inside that table, there are those data we added to the studio. So if I connect that to here, so all of those data will be loaded to the Power BI, and then you can create the auto model, 
and then visualize those data. And whenever, if I back to the SQLite studio, it can, it can be uh, a software which is connected to that SQLite database, not the studio. I use the studio to show you, to create a data, SQLite database and show you how you can connect that to the Power BI, but it can be something like PCs or some other softwares. And then you can connect your Power BI to there. But now if I add, for example, another one here and name it as a, as a Richard and 40, then click OK. And here, if I refresh this selected database and back to the PC, Power BI, then here, we should have three items. And if I refresh that, <clears throat> then next, the new one, the Richard 4T will be appear here. So there is a connection now between the data, with the Power BI to the SQLite database. So it can be every, every type of the database in SQLite. So you can connect it to the Power BI, then create a model and visualize that. So, okay, let's, Let's back to the presentation. Is there any questions so far? If not, I will move to- Not, not yet, I could go on please. Okay, so let me just back to the presentation. Okay, so I'll, from now to the end of the say, end of the, this presentation, I wanna focus on the P6 database a little bit to understand the backend of the P6, I'm sorry, what... I'm sorry for interrupting you. The uh, Pranam tree is asking that how do I create my database in SQLite? This is the question. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so uh, as I show you, you can use the SQLite database if you want to create it manually or many other, you can you know, write a query to create that one. You can use the SQLite studio. If you want to download the SQLite studio, let me share this on the chat. Oh, I find the chat again. Okay. So you can download that, it's totally free. And then in that software, you can go and create a, create a database there. So you can go there and then click on the add the database or you can go there and uh, remove that, add it. Or if you have a database, you can import that there. So if I want, I wanna create database here, select which type of database, I wanna SQLite 3, and I can say here, name it as a aa.db. Oh, it's not there. So I, will, I can select whatever I want here. So for example, this file, I can select this one and then name it another name as a, for example, flex, and then create the database from the scratch. But, what you can do otherwise, um, let me show you another thing here. So da, 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 if I want to add the database, yeah, you can, this one is the best, the, the best way. I don't want to make it complicated. So you can define it manually. If you want, you can select it here, select the file here or uh, click on the add and then uh, click on the add button and add a new database. For example, I'd name it as a test Goku how to add DB SQLite and click on save. That will create a new file with the db.gen and the name of that will be the test Goku. I mean, if I click on click, that will uh, appear here. Click here and then first click on connect to the database. Then you can see the data table and view. If you click on the table, you can click and create a table here. Then you can name the table, for example, name it as a ta fact table and click on this okay. And then add a, uh, add a column for that one. So you can see it, I can type an ID for that one and make it as an integer. And then you can add another column as a name and name it and select a string for that one there. Yeah. So if you click on okay here, then back to the data, then you can define, add some data manually. For example, ID is one one, the name is the heat, and then add the word, second one 22, and the name is Elga. So now you have a database there with this name, with one table, two data in there, but you can define the many table as table, many tables uh, as, as requested or as required. 
and then define the table there, data there. You can import the data to there from the other files. You can export that from here. You can even connect that to the other software. You can write the query to there. There are many ways to do, add the data here, same as the SQL, SQL, uh, SQL database, but this is the easiest way if you want to change, create something and test it. For example, this one I have here ha uh, has many uh, data there with many table here. So I can connect that one there. So I hope I answered your question, but if you have another question, I didn't cover your, uh, your question, please let me know. Okay, so let's back to the presentation. Okay. Here, so, and, okay, so I want to talk a little bit about the backend of the PCs. So especially the, of the tables, the most important tables, when you want to connect your Power BI to the PC. So there are around 120 tables. If you want to connect your Power BI to the PC, it depends on the version of the PC. As I told you, there are, uh, there are the different, type, the different type of the P6. So I told you there is a PPM and EPPM and the Oracle database and SQL and SQLite. The, data, the tables for each of those type of databases are 90% same. But if you use the EPPM with the Oracle database, the structure of the database and, num and the number of the tables is a little bit different than SQLite. But for those main tables, everything is same. So uh, if you want to, if you use, and I used in the past, uh, use the EPPM version with the Oracle, and now you want to use the SQLite, maybe you had one folder per table there, but it's not in the SQLite, that's okay. But you can find all information in each type of the database, they are there, but it's a little bit, because for example, in Oracle EPPM, there are some tables which are aggregation of the other tables, yeah. So the most important, so there are 120 tables in the backend of the P6, but the most important one, which you can name it as a fact table with many, with the, with the key table columns is the project table, which contains the project details and the settings with around 84 columns or the fields. And then the second one is project WBS. I told you about a little bit about the WBS and that contains around 42 fields or the columns, which contains all elements of the WBS. And then the, the biggest one because of the activity is the task table. All the activities, all activities data are so, and you can are storing the task table and you can find all those information there. So <clears throat> if you wanna connect, uh, create data model and connect it uh, and create a sample report for the beginning, you need to import those three tables. But because all, and all the information in the, in the one project schedule is project, WBS and activities, in most cases you have to import uh, you or use those tables. And then you can use the other tables from that 120 tables to add, for example, the resource, to add the in value data, to add the risk information or many other things. Uh, so the main fields in the project table is the project ID and the project short name and original project ID and last three calc data. Uh, for those people which are working in the scheduling pair part, the project ID is the table with the unique ID. It's not the project number because the project number will be in the project short name. The project ID is the object ID is, is a unique ID which, uh, uh, which you, can, you can't see it and you can't find it on your P6, Primara P6. You can find it just in the database and that's the unique, tail, unique number that database assigned to each project to make it unique and tag the, the, those uh, and add the tag those projects. The other tables, task WBS, all of them has that project uh, project uh, project uh, column. So if you want to create a relationship, that's a good column because in the project table, that's a unique column. So that's a great column with the key factor, key data to connect that to the other tables. And uh, your data model will be 
something like this to connect with the project ID and it will be something like this picture. So the project and then the project WBS and task. And if you want to add the other tables, you can use that snow, uh, you can use that yeah, star schema to connect all those tables to project. But for some of them, you need, uh, if you want to create a very complicated uh, the data model, you need to use the, the snowflake type of the data model to connect for, for a project WBS to another table because there is no project ID in that table. You, you need to use WBS ID. So yeah, that's pretty much about those tables. So let me back to the PCs. Let me close this one. Yeah, back to the PCs and just show you how I can pull the information, the activities, everything from there. So before that, we review that uh, we added the driver for ODB, the ODBC, and then we created the P6 DSN here, which is connected with, uh, this is, uh, with, with, is connected to the SQLite database of the P6, and we can use it in the Power BI to connect it with the P6 database. Let me just uh, remove this one, okay. Okay. So here, uh, if you, oh, not this one, like there, this one, yeah, okay. So I created this very simple project with uh, four activities, start, finish, start, finish here. You can see the Gantt chart here. Those activities are connected to each other like this. So I want to connect my Power BI, this Power BI to the back end of the PCs and create uh, one sample report to show the, for example, to show the, to show the activities, number of activities and details for activities. So I went back to the Power BI, go, oh, not this one, connect, click on get data, go to the more, and then search for ODBC to find it. And then we need to connect to select that user uh, DSN created for P6. So here, type ODBC. So connect, and then here we created before P6. One, if you want to write a code here, the SQL code, you can write it here. You can define, you write your code here, and then click on OK. So, but uh, if you click on OK, that will show you the show, show the data, all the tables here. So you can see all those tables here. It's around 132 tables. And these tables are here because my Primora P6 is now open. So our, those are that, those are just because I opened that one here. So what I want to do first, I want to connect the uh, project. I want to load the project table here. Then I want to uh, load the WBS, project WBS. And at the end, I want to uh, task, I want to load the task table. So, okay. I want to load three tables, which I told you the info, which data you can find in those tables and how you can connect those tables to each other. And those three tables are main tables. So for most of the repo you want to create for P6, you need to uh, connect those tables to uh, load those tables and use the data from there. So let's check that because my automated connection is on. Uh, let's check and make sure that everything is okay here. So let's check. Uh, should be uh, P here. So it's connected with the project ID. Okay, then this one with project ID. Perfect. Everything ready. So if I go to, to check data here in the project section, you can see we have two uh, two rows here. But if I back the PCs, we have one project here. So the first one, as you can see, is the EPS, EPS, which is here. So that EPS is the enterprise structure. If you have different enterprises the, and you want to group your projects and add it there, you can define the EPS there. So you can see the, EP, the uh, project short name, which is the project ID 1000 is there. And the project ID here is the unique number that 375 you can't find it in the P6 in the software. So that's a unique, unique number it's here and you can use it to connect your tables to each other. So if I go to the project WBS, then you can see there are four items there. B6, 
because uh, but in the project section, we have just two items here. And if I go to the WBS section, you can see we just have two WBS. What is the, the reason of that? Because the EPS and projects are still WBS in the back end of the, uh, the back end of the P6. So EPS and then project name, and then you can find that the one and two. One and two are the number of the these two P1, two. Uh, the number of that, those WBS and the name of them are WBS A and WBS P. So you can find them here. So that's the WBS one. And if you go to the task, you can see there are four tasks here, four activities here with these codes here. Oh, sorry. Here. <clears throat> and this two, this three one. Okay. So task code here is the project, uh, a project ID here. But the, the project ID, can't find these numbers in the P6. It's just in the back end. And to make those rows unique, it will automatically assign, assign a unique code to each row. And then we have the WBS ID. And you can see two of them are blind to this WBS and two, uh, two of them, this activity, uh, this activity, 30, what is that? 20 and 30 are blind to another to same WBS. And that's correct because both of them are under WSP. So then if you want to visualize that, we can go there, so use the task name. Uh, if you search for the name, oops, for the task name, we can add it there. And you can see the task name one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five is there. And then if I want to search for ID, then in the task, we can find that the project, uh, this one, the task code, we can find it there, code, search for that one task code here. And if I want to show the date, um, can search for the date, and then I can find the, uh, uh, for example, target date here, do, 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 where is that? Uh, okay, so let me just say target. Yeah, okay. Target end date and target start date. So target end date, target start date and target finish date. And you can see those dates are here. So for activity A, it's 1st of the April to 14th of the April. And you can see it's first of April to 22 of April. What's the difference of there? Because this activity actu activated and finish is 22nd of April. So for that one, we need to find the actual date for that one. That 14 was the plan date and it seems that delay happened there, but there is another uh, column here for the actual date, this one actual start date. And if I add it there, should be 22nd of the April. So yeah, <clears throat> what is that activity here? First of all, it start not end here. Okay. So 22nd, as you can see here, same as this one because it is acti activated. But here uh, activity 10 30 is 1st of August to 7th of October. So it's 1st of August to 7th of October when it's activated or finals or um, done you can see the actual dates here. So there are many, many columns and tables uh, in the, the database of the P6 and then you need to play with that one and check those things. I highly recommend if you wanna do that, you connect the P6 to, to your uh, Power BI, let's uh, start to create one project with some uh, sample activities, then start change data and then check the, check the tables and see the, which item will be changed to understand, the, for example, how you can find the resource. If you assign the resource, you want to find the budget in which table you can find it. You need to check that. But if you search on the Oracle, the Oracle, the Oracle website, you can find the file with the structure of the, all the tables, but it's very hard to find that, for example, how you, in which uh, active column you can find that active, for example, act, uh, actual dates. My suggestion is to play with those files, with those activities, and then check the backend to find which, uh, to find out which table has which data and how you can find that, find those, those data. 
So Elga, that's pretty much everything about this session. If there is any question, please let me know. Uh, uh, there is no question, but uh, I, uh, I will ask you a question. Um, uh, will you be so kind as to talk about, of course, if there is uh, such a thing, like, you know, uh, the connection between power automate and primavera physics? Power automate, primavera. Yes. So it depends on what you want to do. What, what, is the, what is the scenario? Which scenario you want to? If you create this database, then you want to you want to for example uh, use the power automate to uh, to refresh your data is another thing you can do it because when when you pull the data to the power bi everything power bi you can use those actions in the power, power automate to do it but if you want to use the power automate to change something in the database in the database of the pcs then the, the story is different you can use the power automate with different action and then you need the right access. With the read access, you can pull the information and visualize them. But if you want to change everything there, then a little bit different with little, little bit action. And yeah, it's not complicated, yeah. but yeah, you can use those, uh, those solutions. Uh, really, thank you very much for your wonderful, uh, say, topic, wonderful session. And by the way, you have very creative presentation. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, so, uh, do you teach Primavera or just you use it? Uh, the Primavera, sorry, what was the question? I didn't get it. No, uh, do you teach? I mean, uh, uh, Primavera, yeah, yeah, because, yeah. you know, uh, right now I spend most of the, my time on Power BI because I'm the program data analyst and report lead in one big construction company, but because my background is all from the program management area. So I worked with this P6 for many years in mega projects in oil refinery and petrochemical complex. So I know the P6 very well. And then I moved to another area of the, the another area, which is the data analysis. So because of that, I work in the construction company, but as a data analyst. So because it's very helpful for me and for the other people in that company. When we want to talk, we know those abbreviations. We know if we want someone to say, I want to see the delay, I want to see the end value, why the SPI is up or CPI is down. Uh, because I have that background, I can create the reports which tells the story they, that's very similar to the, what they are looking for. So yeah. But in the past, I, I taught, uh, taught the P6, but not right now. Yeah. Actually, it's a little bit different because in my turn also, I have used, uh, you know, I have just tried to learn uh, Primavera, uh, but I found it very difficult and then it's like yeah. my decision. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> to make a connection between Power BI, uh, you know, uh, Power Bay and also uh, Primavera. Really, it's you know, it's a cool thing. It's really very interesting. You know. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and it's very helpful to be honest. It's very helpful because now you need to export most of the people. I did that before. We define the report or copy paste the data from the PC and move it to the Excel. Then connect the Excel file to the Power BI. And that's too much manual things. And you can't, for example, if you want to analyze your P6, uh, you need to ex export many data from there, create, update many files, and then connect to the Power BI. But now, for example, you can connect it to the Power BI. Whenever you change something, you can press F5 because whenever you change anything in the P6, you need to hit that F5 to update the, the, the database and then just refresh your database, your Power, power, power BI. And, everyone can see everything. For example, for cash flow, if you have 10 projects with 20, with five project managers, and you wanna update them and show them the power to the project managers, you can create a dashboard, update everything, and then just send that link of that report to them and say, okay, yeah, you can find everything there. Just go there, click on that one, you see the cash flow, you can see the milestone dates and everything there. So you don't need to 
Yeah, so, uh, so uh, Akbar Kamran from Canada is asking, hi, White, thanks uh, for explaining in detail. Can you please show your recent sample dashboard developed from P6? That's the question. Uh, uh, because most of them are for my companies and there is an NDA behind that. So, and most of those data are sensitive data. Uh, um, I can, but it's not very, you know, not very good for me and for company because most of those data are sensitive data. So all of them are budget, all of them are activities. So please excuse me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll let's me, let me do it quickly. But I, I think don't... you have uh, your website and there, there, there are, I found something interesting there. So. Yeah. But you know, yeah, if you want to, for example, uh, see the, all, everything about this presentation, you can go to my website here, right, DM, and then you can find the same topic here, Connect Power BI with SQLite Power P6, and I explain everything there. Yeah. But yeah, sorry for that, because if I knew that I wanna show that I could create another sample data, remove all, those financial things from that day dashboard and show that to you, but maybe in future I can create, snip some uh, screenshot from that, those repo and send it to you and you can share it with your group. So I need permission, Wahid. Uh, I'm just going to stop uh, just uh, streaming, right? Yeah. On Facebook. And also I'm just going to stop.